start recording. So we left off, we finished all the preparation methods. Now we'll start with the physical and chemical properties. Um, physical properties is not much to it. Um, we consider like physical properties, they are all like not, uh, when haloalkanes, haloarenes are uh, harmful, they are colorless, odorless gases. Chloroform, you guys are very familiar with what sort of effects it has on humans. It is used, like it used to be used as an anesthetic at one point until they realized that it was harmful for human beings in excessive quantities, so stop using it. Um, apart from that, we'll talk about melting point, boiling point. What do you think would be the uh, trend for melting point, boiling point? So melting point, it would be uh, symmetrical uh, and for boiling point, it would be polarity. The criteria. It, it depends on that, yes. So first thing, uh, before everything else, um, it also depends on the number of carbon atoms and uh, halogen atoms. Let's say it depends on the molecular mass. Whenever you compare melting points, boiling points, look at the molecular mass. So as molecular mass increases, the melting point, boiling points also increases. Then beyond that, if they are all of comparable molecular masses almost equal to each other, then you look at polarity and isomerism and all these other things. Uh, let's pick each one one by one. Among isomers, how do you figure out which one has a greater melting point, uh, which one has a lower melting point? Branching. Branching and number of carbon. Branching and number of number of carbon atoms though related to molecular mass only. So apart from that, yeah, if you look at branching, what does branching do? Like if all if the number of carbon atoms, halogen atoms is all same, molecular mass agar same hai, to uh, branching the, is inversely proportional to the melting point. Yes, if there are the more branches there are the melting and boiling points decreases. Yeah. And finally, uh, so this also relates to solubility. So I'll talk about that also. So haloalkanes, haloarenes, do you think they're soluble in water? No. Yes, no. No. Why? Why are they not soluble? Non-polar solvent. They're non -polar. Yes. Not soluble in water, they're more soluble in organic solvents because they're non-polar. Okay, organic usually, most of them, this is the case except for whenever you have like hydrogen bonding and things like that possible. So not very soluble in water. These are like basic physical properties. So usually all the chapters, whenever we talk about physical properties, this is what we talk about. We talk about melting point, boiling points, we talk about solubility. And if there's any special cases with respect to uh, what do they look like? What do they smell like? What do they taste like? Those aspects of it. The same in all the cases. Now let's get to chemical properties. This is the major, major important bit of the chapter. Chemical properties, again, as always, it's all uh, has to do with how do these compounds react with other substances. So a defining nature of haloalkanes, haloalkanes mainly, not so much haloarenes, is their nucleophilic substitution reactions. Yes. Hmm? Yes, for solubility, you said non-polar for haloarenes, right? 
Yeah, hello Alkins, hello Arenes, they're all non-polar. Especially as... Yeah, right. So what's the criteria for solubility? Like, like is For hello Arenes, hello Arenes, it depends on what, like how non-polar they are. Yeah. So smaller haloalkanes, haloalkanes specifically, you might find them being slightly, very sparingly soluble in water. Like I'm talking about just chloromethane. That also not so much, very slightly. And especially as the number of carbon atoms increases, again, you come across that hydrophilic, hydrophobic nature, right? So all carbon compounds are hydrophobic by default. The only reason why some of the substances like your acetic acid, uh, alcohols, these kind of things end up uh, soluble in water is because of the extra things they have, like the OH on like the oxygen being electronegative. There is a scope for hydrogen bonding, which makes it soluble in water. So those are more like the exceptions. As a rule, most of the organic compounds are not soluble in water because of the very nature, because all of them are essentially non-polar. Um, yeah. What are some examples of non-polar solutes? Sugar. Sugar is the best example. Um, when we talk about acetic acid, again, it's acid by nature, right? So that brings in the polarity there. It's not completely non-polar. Uh, alcohols, yes. There is some amount of polarity. It's not like 100% non-polar. Um, off the top of my head, yeah, so these come into picture. Even amines for that matter. Aniline and um, yeah, a lot of the smaller amines, methanamine, ethanamine, these are soluble in water. Again, for the same reason that nitrogen ka lone pair of electrons scope for hydrogen bonding. So like polarity is not as high as with inorganic substances, salts and all that, but there's a tiny amount of polarity. That slight amount is enough for it to be distinct. Okay. All right, coming back to chemical properties, nucleophilic substitution reactions. This is defining for haloalkanes. Uh, you'll be coming across these reactions again when we talk about alcohols, uh, when we talk about amines, like whenever you have like the nucleophile uh, functional group. Is that ma'am? Mm -hmm. Hello alkenes and hello arenes polarities same, like how they behave, uh, like insolubility and all that. Hello arenes would be less polar because. Again, those electrons are involved in resonance, right? So they won't be available to form uh, hydrogen bonding. Like if you compare haloalkanes, haloarenes, they're both non-polar. They're both non-polar, but haloarenes are even less polar because if you look at the CX bond in haloalkanes, there's a slight bit of polarity because of electronegativity of halogen. But in the case of haloarenes, resonance or na. So there's a slight double bond nature to it, which makes it even less polar. We did this in the, I mean, in our previous class when we were comparing CX bonds of haloalkanes, haloarenes, bond polarity. Haloarenes are less polar compared to haloalkanes. Which are all chemical properties. Yeah. I have a dumb question, but. Are all haloalkanes non-polar? See, again, it's not a black and white situation, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, as the number of carbon atoms increases, there's going to be electron donating thing. Like, 
alkyl groups have that nature so and there will always be electronegativity difference right so they have to be all non polar or so or yeah all polar so slight polarity will be there again it's not 100% non polar but smaller like if i compare ch3cl with something like c4h9cl there's going to be greater polarity in this case compared to this only because there's lot of a uh, greater number of carbon atoms in this case so the more number of carbon atoms the less polar it is yes hydrophobic nature right yeah all of that is circling around the same concept okay uh let's come back to this nucleophilic substitution pretty big words there but simple uh do you remember what nucleophilic means you know what nucleophiles are the electron rich basically they attack on the electron deficit ones there you go so they are electron rich they like nucleophiles they are attracted to positive nature like whichever has electron deficient atoms so nucleophilic substitution reaction so yahan pe kya ho raha hai there is a nucleophile will denoted by nu minus nu for short for nucleophile and we saying minus because it's an electron rich species now halo alkane you have a cx bond x attracting the electrons towards itself that's what we were discussing thoda sa polarity hai iska so the nucleophile essentially is attracted to the carbon atom and these electrons are taken by x so essentially what happens is the nucleophile takes the place of the halogen atom in the compound that's why it's a substitution reaction the nucleophile it is electron rich or deficient electron rich it is attracted to electron deficient stuff Yeah, so you end up having a new compound. Nucleophile takes the place of the halogen, and X minus just goes away. Okay, yeah. so there are some terms. Um, Nu is the nucleophile, which is which is basically attacking the compound. In this situation, like it takes the place of halogen, it's like kicking the halogen out, right? So halogen, this particular thing is called a leaving group because it leaves the compound pretty self explanatory so initially uh, the nucleophile is attracted to the carbon or the halogen nucleophile will not be attracted to the halogen at all ye bhi negative charge hai halogen ke paas bahut sare electrons hai so it is attracted to carbon and then the bond shifts so that's why the uh, bond shift halogen the electrons shift yeah yeah Yeah. So halogens by nature they want to pull electrons towards themselves. So they are if the, these two are anyway in like a tug of war situation. Iske paas thoda negative charge hoga, iske paas thoda positive charge hoga, which is what the nucleophile is attracted to. And because यहाँ पे bond form हो रहा है, this ends up taking the electrons. So exactly what takes place? There are mechanisms that we're going to study. uh depending on what alkyl group is attached you have two mechanisms you have something called sn2 mechanism and you have sn1 mechanism so this we will read about it in detail okay but before we get to these mechanisms let's talk a little more about nucleophiles be able to identify nucleophiles um Can you guys give examples of nucleophiles? Think of CN, huh? CN, CN, absolutely. Cyanide is a nucleophile. Is OH minus? OH minus, yes. Ammonia is ammonia. Ammonia. more like amines yes nitro group 
nitro group yes absolutely halogens no no not halogens halogens we come under nucleophiles like if i have it like cl here i minus can the halogens can be that to like i minus like cl minus can replace an i minus for example those sort of cases but in general halogens also come under nucleophiles absolutely let's see what else do we have Is this SN like this is SN one? I haven't reached there yet, Arya. So before that's what I'm saying. Like before we get to um, the mechanisms, we'll talk a little bit about um, the nucleophile themselves first. So in your textbook, there's like a whole table given about nucleophiles, like their structures and the names. Um, just looking it up. Here it is. So OH minus is a nucleophile. This is a very good table, like just like note it down somewhere, keep it for your reference. Uh, because you also have like what is the reagent kaha se milega if you want OH minus. H2O is a nucleophile. The lone pair of electrons on oxygen acts as the uh, that's the electrons that get donated in the reaction. Uh, ether groups like OR dash alkoxide groups are a nucleophile. Halogens is what I was talking about. I minus, which replaces like Br minus or Cl minus. Amine, ammonia is a nucleophile. Amines are nucleophiles. Cn is a nucleophile. NO2 is nucleophile. Oh yeah, uh, acetate ion, carboxylate ions are also nucleophiles. Yeah, I'll just star mark some of these. These are the most more common ones you guys are going to come across. So OH minus uh, reactions, right? yeah. The third uh, column is like what, how they look after the substitution. Yes, correct. This is one, this also you'll come across. This slightly, yeah. Ma'am. Huh? Can you explain the difference between alkyl nitrite and nitroalkane? Yes. So there are a couple of them, which I will, that we have to discuss. Um, so this pair is one that you need to look out for, and this pair is another you need to look out for. Nitriles versus isonitriles and alkyl nitrites versus nitroalkanes. Here. Yeah. So these that I'm marking, uh, you will find reactions with them like more often. LiLH4 though is like every time you want to introduce hydrogen to anything, whatever the functional group they may be, you want to introduce hydrogen, you use LiLH4. That will just reduce it right up. Yeah, so these are the things. Okay. Now, look, let's discuss nitrile versus isonitrile first. What do you find is the difference between these two? Like both of them have C triple bond N, but why do we, why are we given as two separate different uh, species, two different nucleophiles. Because in the first one, uh, I guess it will attach to nitrogen and in the other one, it AG is attached to carbon. Uh, it's the other way around. So whenever you have nitrile group, the alkyl, like the nucleophile, like the attack is from the carbon side of it. So you end up with RC triple bond N. 
but in this case when you use silver cyanide as a reagent silver being okay the reason behind it we'll discuss later but when you have isonitrile the difference is c isocyanides ke liye r n c likha hua hai na so in this case it is more like the alkyl group attaches itself to the nitrogen side of things theek okay. hai so this has excess of like this has little bit of deficient this has like excess that is the difference between cyanides and or nitriles and isonitrile cyanide versus isocyanide the reason like it depends on what product you want to produce whether it is rcn or rnc you take either potassium cyanide or silver cyanide okay so before we get to the reason this kind of nucleophiles jisme the bond can be formed on multiple atoms yahan se ho sakta hai ya fir yahan se ho sakta hai so that sort of nucleophiles are called ambident nucleophiles could you repeat ma'am yeah so the nucleophiles uh in which there are there's more than one atom that can bond to the substrate to the main organic compound such a nucleophile that sort of nucleophile is called an ambident nucleophile ambident it's easy to remember you guys have come across this word before um amphibian ambidextrous so again what else do you have acidic basic may be ek hai i forgot that name right now amphoteric amphoteric so whenever you have like amb amphi that sort of a thing present basically means that it can there are multiple like, there's two ways of doing it so when we talk about ambident nucleophile there's multiple atoms that can bond within the same nucleophile so um how like cn is one particular compound and usually a compound is like one positive one negative like na plus cl minus nacl hmm. so how can cn be both negative so that is why you are using different reagents na like once you're done noting down about ambident nucleophile i'll tell you why in one case it is be behaving as cn minus with carbon being the negative part and in the other case it's behaving in the other way around okay so once you guys have finished noting this i'll change the screen we'll get into that part is, is cn a stable uh, compound no 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 CN, it's like yeah. cyanide i no cn is just a group just like oh and everything it attaches to something else are you guys with me adat smera sanskriti arna you guys have been like awfully quiet this whole time our fees so good right now that's why what i got for you okay yes ma'am i'm just trying to get So only if we take from AgCl, uh, it will be R N C. Yeah. So it's not like focus yeah, is more of AgCl. It's more of if you take a highly electropositive metal like KCN, NaCN, you're going to get cyanides. But if you take any D block like AgCN, mercury cyanide, something that's not very electropositive that has a greater covalent nature you're going to end up with isocyanides the ha as like is it necessary yeah. for it only to be ag or it could be something yeah the difference is in the cation you caught it correctly but it's not specific to silver so it's more of more electropositive versus less electropositive Okay. But from how like 
if it's a more electro positive then that's how it will bond and if it's less then it that's the other way around like what's the law yeah so grade 11 may do you guys remember something that you studied called fahans rules hmm the bigger anion smaller cation yeah but what is the effect what does fahans rule deal with covalent nature ionic covalent nature. nature correct covalent nature within ionic bonds right so depending on the charge depending on the size of the ions depending on all these factors uh even though it's a metal even though it's like electropositive in nature you end up with a greater covalent nature and lesser ionic nature so in this case also that's what it like that's what it has to do with uh compounds or salts like agc and kcn when you have more electropositive elements here bonding to a cyanide ion so this has greater ionic nature so when you put it in solution when you make it react this is going to outright split into metal ion and cn minus anion so when it comes to cn minus anion this is the structure of the nucleophile this has no option but to bond at carbon kyunki iske paas greater electrons hai but when the covalent nature is more when it is less ionic like in the case of agcn that is why it is represented in this way so yahan pe what happens is like okay yeah it, it's given right here so instead of the negative charge being concentrated on carbon it is concentrated more towards nitrogen so there is like a covalent nature established between the metal and the carbon over here so the dominant nucleophilic nature like the one that goes and attacks like whatever r cl is going to be the nitrogen atom the attack happens from the nitrogen side of things this this is not breaking that easily so the final product what you end up getting is the carbon from the halo alkane or whatever you are using ends up bonding with nitrogen instead of with carbon getting it makes sense um is so kcn is formed by transfer of electrons and agcn is formed by sharing again it's not always black or white area so that's what fahans will explains ki even though it's primarily an ionic bond you end up having a little bit of covalent nature that's like a speciality of d block elements which is where you get your coordinate compounds and all of that from so because of that greater covalent nature when it comes to agcn compared to nacn or kcn it is difficult to break like this won't split into ag plus and cn minus as easily as k plus and cn minus happens it oh, is but like when it is being formed is it by transfer or sharing or do we not know like we can't categorize it like that transfer only i mean okay so one primary one fundamental issue here arya is when we talk about ionic bonds it is not outright transfer of electrons like this is a beef i have like even those who have studied grade 9 grade 10 with me i always mention this ionic compound matlab it is not transfer of electrons ionic compound matlab you just have positive ions and negative ions kaise form hua positive ion negative ion there are a million ways they can be formed it may already exist as an ion ki nacl salt may na plus and cl minus is an ion and then it reacts with another cyanide compound or something with silver and then wo ion form hua ya fir during the basis of the reaction like if i have pure na and cl2 gas then it may form like jo bhi electrons sodium loses that will be gained by cl minus in that case it may look like a transfer of electrons but primarily ionic compound matlab it is not transfer of electrons it's it just tells you that usme positive ions hai aur negative ions hai dono mein attraction hai and that's how that compound is formed 
so agcn primarily yeah you have silver ions cyanide ions isliye you are getting silver cyanide ions but once it settles into that salt no like once you have the positive ions and negative ions surrounding each other then this proximity again electrons are just blobs of negative charges right because of the species that are involved because this happens to be a silver ion uh because of you know it has empty d orbitals and all that it there's a slight covalent nature that is established it has empty d electrons that the electron or d orbitals that the electrons can occupy so those blobs of electrons negative charge that cyanide has they start going towards silver electrons who excitation d excitation hota rahega and it kind of looks like okay are they sharing electrons it's not an outright covalent bond but because those electrons happen to travel between both of these atoms uh, it kind of tends to gain like a covalent nature that's what fahans rules say covalent nature of ionic bonds okay now because that covalent nature has been established between silver and carbon it is difficult to break this here like the negative charge is not concentrated on carbon it is concentrated on nitrogen which ends up attacking the carbon atom from your haloalkane that's why you end up forming rnc instead of rcn and in uh, in case of the ion like the uh, kcn1 where hmm. it dissociated uh the similar bond is preferred so in case of kcn isme ionic nature is much higher because potassium is extremely electropositive it in like when you put it in solution it immediately dissociates into k plus and cn minus okay so that's why you know when it is in cn minus the car like negative charge is concentrated on carbon so carbon is the one that goes and attacks the carbon atom you end up forming a nitrile so our teacher told us chemistry ki um, the cc bond is preferred over the cn bond because it's carbon carbon so that's similar over carbon nitrogen so is that different from what you just said so that is like after it is formed that is absolutely correct that's also another factor so i am coming at it from a point of view of uh, if when we use different reagents why do we get different products so you know like when you look at it in the solution yes so cc bond is preferred but why is that not the case in the case of cn bond cuz essentially idhar bhi like cn hi hai na so why is that not kick into action when you use silver cyanide is because this has more of a covalent nature like it, nitrogen is the one that attacks when you use silver cyanide Yes, I didn't understand why nitrogen will attack. Like I understood, it will be more covalent. But so what if it's more covalent? So if it is more covalent, so this is not split. Like let me clear this out. Now silver cyanide is not easily splitting up as Ag plus and Cl Cn minus, right? Like how it is happening over here. If that happened, then cyanide ion here cyanide would be the one to attack but that's not what hap what is happening over here in the case of agcn it is not splitting as ag plus and cn minus this is the nucleophile that is going to attack in the case of silver cyanide you can see that this bond is not breaking over here so this won't break until and unless like it's the lone pair of electrons on nitrogen that is going to like over here carbon is not free to attack the substituent carbon is already occupied ki ek side silver hai ek side nitrogen hai so that's why nitrogen is the one that's like free to attack the r and form r and c that is the reason i pointed out this table this is a very good table 
इट इज क्लियरली टेलिंग यू ओके ये वाला रिएजेंट यूज किया तो वॉट न्यूक्लियो फाइल इज बींग फॉर्म सो वेन यू यूज एन ए ओ एच और के ओ एच दिस आउट राइट स्प्लिट्स इन टू एन ए प्लस ओ एच माइनस के प्लस ओ एच माइनस दैट्स वाई योर ओ एच माइनस हैपन्स टू बी द न्यूक्लियो फाइल सो वॉट न्यूक्लियो फाइल इज फॉर्म इन द रिएक्शन सो दिस विल गिव यू अ हिंट की ओके दिस न्यूक्लियो फाइल वेन इट अटैक्स माई uh halo alkane this is the product that i will be getting and this just gives you the description of the product yahan pe alcohol is formed alcohol is formed ror dash is ether kyunki or dash is the nucleophile attacking i write um uh, amines yeah uh, you said ki cn ki jagah pe it could be any metallic cyanide similarly instead of ag cn what did you say instead of ag What, so you need to be careful about what sort of metal you are looking at highly electropositive metal like na plus k plus uh on top or kya hai potassium sodium aluminum like those sort of highly electropositive metals matlab cn minus form hoga because they will ionize easily but if it is not very electropositive like silver is somewhere on the bottom of the uh series right so silver mercury or yes yeah. lead maybe like metals like these agar unka cyanides liya to you end up getting isocyanide got it okay cool so same is the case with alkyl nitrite versus nitro alkane so this is another example of your ambident nucleophile so this is the shape of nitro group depending on whether it's one of the oxygen atoms or whether it's the nitrogen atom depending on what attaches what attacks the carbon atom and replaces the halogen atom you end up getting either alkyl nitrite or nitro alkane so here also you can see that nitrite ke liye you use a nitrite potassium nitrite sodium nitrite so this outright splits into no2 minus and k plus and no2 minus is the one that attacks this thing so whenever it's no2 minus when you have an anion how is the this particular anion formed do you know we use a different color stand out so this is a derivative of nitrous acid do you remember what is nitrous acid hno2 hno2 correct structure of nitrous acid so nitrogen is the central atom so one side you have double bond o the other side one you single bond o oh h oh h yeah sorry so this is the h that goes off as h plus and the anion oxygen pe you have the double negative charge form so this is nitrite ion so that is why negative charge jahan pe bhi concentrated hai you see r o n double bond o okay that's why you get alkyl nitrite because this is basically like the nitrite ion this part of it and nitro alkane is when nitrogen is the one that's directly bonded to the alkyl group so that also again agno2 is the reagent ag plus and nitrite ion se hi bana hai silver nitrite but because of the nature of silver this bond won't break as easily it's the lone pair of electrons on nitrogen that ends up attacking and you get the nitrite nitro group attached same as with cyanide just that it's a different anion can this reasoning be asked in the exam yeah that's why like ambident nucleophiles ke bare mein like mentioned it so what are ambident nucleophiles you need to know remember a couple of examples uh cyanide isocyanide nitrite nitro group so this basically examples of an amidin nucleophiles 
and the reason behind you know which one is preferred for what reagent you may be asked direct application also he chloroform or no it's not chloroform okay chloropropane when it is treated with agcn what would be the major product then you need to identify ki cyanide nahi hoga isocyanide hoga major product so that's what they're looking for that way could you uh, say a uh, like tell again why nitrogen will form and not oxygen yeah it's the same no same reasoning for ionic like ionic and covalent is the same reasoning for uh, kcn and agcn right yes yeah the principle behind it is the same just that it's a different case yahan pe cyanide ke bare mein baat kare yahan pe nitro ke bare mein baat kare that's it okay so this is all about ambient nucleophiles now let's look at the mechanism of the reaction okay before we look at the mechanism of the reaction there's one more point uh when it comes to nucleophilic substitution um okay just note this down this is more of you'll be asked again reactivity ke bare mein puch sakte hain i minus is the best leaving group What does this mean? I minus can be substituted the best by any nucleus. Correct. So if I were and okay, so before we get to the order, why is I minus the best leaving group? Largest size. Largest size. Largest size. Correct. So carbon atom same here. Iodine is extremely big. Bromine is like slightly smaller. and chlorine is okay. even more smaller yeah so out of these three which bond can be broken most easily la the largest iodine iodine can be broken easily so broken easily matlab it can leave like break and break up and leave easily that's the best leaving group so based on this can you guys tell me the order of reactivity Iodine, bromine, chlorine. Yes. Chlorine, chlorine. Iodides most reactive, followed by bromides, followed by chlorides, followed by chlorides. so this is the main order of reactivity now let's get to the mechanism of the reaction okay mm i'll give you guys uh, i'll show you guys what it means so we'll be talking about sn2 first so it depends on which halo alkane we are talking about depending on what compound it is what its structure is it will either follow sn1 or it will follow sn2 so once we discuss both the mechanisms i'll also help you i'll give you the points ki how do you decide whether it's going to go for sn1 or sn2 okay so first let's look at sn2 mechanism uh sn2 what are these alphabets what are these numbers s stands for substitution because we're talking about substitution reactions n means nucleophilic and 2 means bimolecular bi 2 like this is pretty common right you have mono bi tri tetra that's what it is so basically 
this mechanism depends on two molecules like rate of reaction and kya ho raha reaction mein all of that it depends on two molecules that's why it's called bimolecular in short termed sn2 the way you write sn2 like this is the convention s n is niche subscript mein and then 2 is like again in normal life that's how you write it okay so i'll show you a visual of what happens in sn2 and uh, yeah then we'll discuss in detail what are the points important points of this okay so haloalkane here in this example we've considered methyl chloride uh bromide is the nucleophile that we are considering in this case okay so we have br minus minus hai matlab electron se extra and substitution it is whatever we discussed in substitution reaction ki bromide being attracted to the carbon while these electrons are being pulled by chlorine except this happens in a single step all it it all happens all at one time only so if you were to show, see the animation this is what it looks like solution mein pehle both of them are separate species this is the big brown one is bromide and then you have chloromethane uh when this comes closer this slowly starts forming a bond with the chloride ion so the bromine is essentially donating its electrons to the electron deficient carbon atom so this is what this aroma represents the and at the same time like as bromine is giving its electrons here carbon is satisfied ki iske paas extra electrons hai so it is willing to let go of this bonded pair of electrons to the chlorine So that's what these arrows represent. That's what is happening over here. So you can see. Let me replay that. So, the bromine forming a bond with the carbon while the carbon breaking the bond with the chlorine is happening simultaneously. and beech mein there was one intermediate where this part bond formed between both of those so that's like the main in reaction intermediate that's formed and that particular intermediate because it's involving both the species like the attacking nucleophile and the leaving group that's why we call it bimolecular that's why we say it is dependent on two species okay yeah. so this is your sn2 mechanism the two species being what your substrate and the reage the nucleophile both carbon and uh, bromine yeah the carbon ka compound the chloro like whatever halo alkane as well as the nucleophile both okay yeah. so another Primary halogen alkanes undergo SN2 reactions, where the S denotes a substitution reaction. The N shows the reaction involves a nucleophile. Two is the number of species involved in the slowest rate determining step. Okay, there's a term here, rate determining step. Now, abhi tak if you've seen any reaction mechanism organic chemistry me, there's like multiple steps, right? Pehle There's like an electrophile or a nucleophile that's formed. Then it's going to attack the carbon atom. Double bond breaks. Yeah, for whatever. There's multiple steps, right? So rate of a reaction is an a very important concept in chemistry. Uh, important enough that there's a whole chapter on it. Chemical kinetics chapter. Me, that's what we'll talk about. How do you measure rate of a reaction and all those cases? So when a reaction happens in multiple steps, think of it as a team. okay like suppose you have multiple members in a team all of them are going at their own speeds so let's say this one is the fastest and c happens to be the slowest if you were to rank the team or rate the team 
will you decide that based on the fastest member of the team or the slowest member of the team like what does that depend on fastest oh. depends on both how slow it is and how fast it, is. it depends on the slowest because it's like imagine all four of them are going at the same time no matter how fast this person reaches the race or the time calculation won't finish until the slowest person also reaches right so like your timing your whatever you're deciding based on this team will depend on the slowest one so if you want to increase the overall team performance you're going to focus on the slowest one but that's a different thing so that is the reason reactions may be if you want to figure out what is the rate of a reaction you're going to focus on the slowest step because until and unless this step happens the reaction will not complete no matter how fast the rest of the steps are okay. what is the meaning of two species involved in the slower step so in what the rate they... determining step we have two species that's what i just told you right like rate of reaction measure karne ke liye there are two species involved like the nucleophile like how fast the nucleophile is forming the bond with the carbon and also how fast the leaving group is leaving so you have the reagent also and the substrate also it depends on both the molecules ka nature and behavior so that's the two species that they're talking about in the rate determining step i'll continue this video so you'll have a better idea a nucleophile is an electron pair donor it is attracted towards species carrying a full or partial positive charge so just pausing it so that you guys can take it in nucleophile hai negative charge hai i think in this case they took oh as the example isliye do atoms hai yahan pe and this is your um carbon so instead of methane they took chloroethane so you have two carbon atoms ch3 ch2 and ch3. so you can see delta negative like okay bromine liya okay. bromine being electronegative isliye you have slight negative charge and carbon se le raha hai so you have a slight positive charge okay following it till here like samajh mein aa raha hai idhar kya liya inhone Plasma. Plasma. Okay. With which it can form a dative covalent bond. Consider the reaction between a hydroxide ion in solution and bromoethane. Both reactants are involved in determining the rate of the reaction in a one-step process. The hydroxide ion attacks the carbon atom from the opposite side to the halogen atom. Because the bromine atom A is so large, it impedes the approach of the smaller hydroxide ion. and b it repels the negative charge nucleophile the lone electron pair on the nucleophile forms a new dative covalent bond with the partially charged carbon atom to give an unstable transition state complex so this is are they having any more hmm i didn't get any of this don't worry about it we are going to dissect it this is we just started discussing about sn2 so we will take it step by step but i want you guys to take in like visually reaction mein kya ho raha hai nucleophile is attacking it's attacking from the back the intermediate is that both of them are forming a bond at the same time like this part i need you guys to pay attention to these details and get that the details what it means uh, transition state like like energy like all of that leave that we'll discuss that aram se but get what is happening in this particular mechanism okay the complex behaves like an umbrella blowing inside out as the bomb so all of that okay inversion and all don't 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 pay attention right now we'll discuss that but what is happening here are you able to get what is this molecule why has it changed its shape like this following that part of it Is this graph important to understand? No. 
focus on the molecules that's what i'm saying like leave the other things aside focus on what's happening to the molecule here just repeat this so you have a halo alkane on this side you have a nucleophile on this side when they meet each other basically when the reaction is happening it will happen only when both of them interact interact matlab you have this bond forming at the same time this bond is like starting to break so this is the intermediate middle point transition state okay. now this is very very unstable you can see that because this carbon has like five bonds that is why this ends up being like really slow and once it has crossed this step you have the product being formed and the leaving group leaves just summarizing it okay this whole part let it don't don't worry about it okay so now i wanted you guys to visualize ki kya ho raha reaction mein i'll play this a couple of times when we discuss a different aspect of this now let's write down what is happening so sn2 bimolecular hai so put all of these together what is sn2 mechanism it is a substitution reaction jahan pe one atom is substituting the other what is it that substitution by a nucleophile the nucleophile is the one that's doing the substituting with two species species matlab atoms ions molecules that are involved involved in the slowest step yahan pe slowest step doesn't make sense cuz like as we saw this is what happens in the reaction so if oh minus is a nucleophile let that react with i'm going to take chloromethane only do you guys rep uh, remember the wedge representation and the dotted representation what it means the so wedge yeah. is like front side and the dotted is back side correct ये वाला हाइड्रोजन पीछे की तरफ है एंड द वेज हाइड्रोजन लाइक द सॉलिड वन इज आगे की तरफ है ऐसा सो व्हेन दिस हैपेंस अगेन बेसिक सब्सटीट्यूशन राइट व्हाट डिड वी सी व्हाट वाज हैपनिंग देयर यहाँ पे हल्का सा पॉजिटिव चार्ज है यहाँ पे हल्का सा नेगेटिव चार्ज है सो द नेगेटिव चार्ज ऑन ऑक्सीजन ऑन द न्यूक्लियोफाइल अटैक्स दिस कार्बन वाइल दिस स्टार्ट दीज इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर टेकन बाय द क्लोरीन राइट सो ट्रांसिशन में यू हैव कार्बन ओवर हियर दिस हाइड्रोजन रिमेन्स एज इट इज ये पीछे वाला हाइड्रोजन रिमेन्स एज इट इज ये आगे वाला हाइड्रोजन रिमेन्स एज इट इज नाउ हियर देर इज वन बॉन्ड स्टार्टिंग टू फॉर्म विथ ऑक्सीजन वाइल दिस स्टार्ट गेटिंग रेडी टू ब्रेक सो पुट दिस इन स्क्वेर ब्रैकेट्स to show that this is the intermediate you call this the transition state kyunki do like reactant product ke ekdam beech mein hai then as the reaction progresses whatever started here will end will continue so yahan pe oh ho ja aa jayega now because you have oxygen atom forming here this is going to push the three hydrogens to the other way around so this hydrogen will be here 
this will be formed over here. And this will be formed in each other. What did you say about the hydrogen being pushed? What? I'll come to that. I'll come to that. So that's a concept. And this also breaks apart by as this is formed solidly. So you have Cl minus bahar. So this is the nucleophile. This is the reactant or the substrate. This is also technically a reactant, but yeah, substrate, nucleophile, transition state, also called the intermediate that is formed. So this is our primary product. This is the leaving group because it's left. Okay. So in this case, यहाँ पे स्लोएस्ट स्टेप का कोई इश्यू नहीं है बिकॉज इट्स ऑल हैपनिंग इन वन स्टेप एंड इन दिस सिंगल स्टेप यू हैव टू रिएक्टेंट्स इन्वॉल्व हियर यू हैव द न्यूक्लियोफाइल आल्सो एंड द एक्चुअल सब्सक्रेट आल्सो सो दिस इज स्पीशीज वन लाइक आई ऑन वन एंड मॉलिक्यूल टू बिकॉज इट इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन टू ऑफ दीज थिंग्स वी कॉल दम स्पीशीज Because both, like one is an ion, one is a molecule, right? Because there are two species involved in the single step that it is happening, you classify it under bimolecular. That's why this is SN two mechanism. ठीक है? I didn't get that. Could you try again? Sure. Okay. Did you guys get it? Because that's more. So are there more reactions like? So we'll talk about SN one, SN two. What else do we have? These. This is like the major, major thing. Uh, iske baad, haloarenes is electrophilic substitution only. Resonance effect. Which product will come? Ortho para. Okay. Another one is elimination reaction. Which you all are familiar with because already here, yeah, huh? I still understand like the hydrogen ka thing. Yeah, we haven't like discussed that in detail yet. That that's what I will talk about next. Abhi ke liye why like where what do you what are these two species? Why do we call it bi molecular? Ko samajh me aaya? Yes. तो एक स्टेप है दैट स्टेप स्पीड ऑफ दिस स्टेप स्पीड ऑफ दिस फॉर्मिंग डिपेंड्स ऑन बोथ ऑफ दीज स्पीशीज कि कितना इजीली ये ब्रेक हो सकता है कितना इजीली ये फॉर्म हो सकता है डिपेंड्स ऑन टू स्पीशीज दैट इज व्हाई इट इज एस एन टू बाय मॉलिक्यूलर ओके ओके नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द नेक्स्ट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द रिएक्शन Okay, leaving group breaks. Huh. The next aspect of the reaction is focus on the reactant and the product. So I'm gonna isolate them. Reactant is basically looking like this. P is here. H is the left here. Chlorine is this side. Then we have one hydrogen over here, and the other hydrogen on this side. And if you look at the product, C is over here, the OH is over here, and then H, one H is over here, and the other H is over here. What do you find is the difference between the reactant and the product here? Difference between what? Difference between the reactant and product. In terms of the structure, the CL is on the the CL is on the right side in the 
uh, reactant, but on OH, like, is on the opposite side. Correct. Right. So there is an inversion taking place. Pele hydrogens to is taraf jo aligned hai, they have blown back. Like think of an umbrella getting caught in the wind and getting in upside down. Aisa tha. So that has become like this now in this direction. Okay. So SN2 reaction, because of how it happens, ki, like the nucleophile attacking from the back side and the leaving group leaving, because of this, how the mechanism takes place, it ends up in something called inversion. So, it was because the chlorine left and the OH came, the hydrogens were converted. Yes. So, this particular kind of inversion is called Walden inversion. Okay. So, SN2 mechanism, we say it always results in inversion of the molecule. If we compare the reactant and the product, it is always inverted. Uh, so, this characteristic inversion is called Walden inversion. So, Walden inversion is characteristic for SN2. Is there like any reason for the inversion of this like that? Yeah, it's a mechanism. Like you can see what is happening, right? Uh, it's the stereochemistry. Just time pass. Huh? <laughs> time pass, nahi. It's like It's like saying... Um, it's because there's like negative uh, chlorine. No, no, no. Sorry. See, like... Okay. I'm trying to look for a piece of paper. Gonna tear it out from here. Suppose I have this piece of paper which is like this. Now, if I suddenly apply force on it, like why did this happen? Why did the shape or direction of this piece of paper change? I held it like this initially. Niche say if I punch it upper, if I slap it upper, why did this change shape? Because you change. Exactly. That's what's happening here. Nucleophile is attacking from piche, right? So pura crowding ho jayega, na? That is the reason when nucleophile comes on this side, these bonds it, they go in the opposite side. If we have, if we carry out this particular reaction and you get the compound, how now the compound, if, if OH is on the right side or left side, the compound is still going to look the same. So how do we know that wo flip ho gaya? That's a very good question. So why is Walden inversion important? That is what we'll be discussing about next. So should we directly get on to discussing about stereochemistry or should I do SN1 reaction also and then discuss stereochemistry? Abhi discuss kar lete because it's in the flow. Then SN1 ke liye applying it will be easy for you guys. So abhi maine ye wala example liya because it's H, 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 same thing. Where does stereochemistry play a very, very important role? Like, where have you come across like stereochemistry being important? Abhi tak, you guys have read about it. Stereoisomerism. Stereoisomerism, absolutely. How many of you? Cistrans. Cistrans for sp2 like when you have a double bond and cistrans is optical isomerism right nay cistrans is geometrical isomer like this is geometrical isomerism 
इट प्योरली डिपेंड्स ऑन ओके लाइक फ्लैट एस पी टू एल्किन है और ऑन फोर साइड ओके डू यू हैव थिंग्स ऑन द सेम साइड और थिंग्स ऑन डिफरेंट साइड अपोजिट साइड दैट्स वॉट सिस ट्रांसिट्स नाउ अदर देन दिस जोमेट्रिकल असाइड फ्रॉम जोमेट्रिकल the other one you have is optical isomerism now what is optical isomerism how many of you remember this yeah you use markers and different colors that is correct so optical isomerism you will find only in chiral carbons do you guys remember chiral versus a chiral symmetrical and asymmetrical yes very related chiral is also different uh, substituents attached to the carbon absolutely tell me how many of you guys remember it because if you do i can proceed from there if you don't i'll explain chiral centers once again this year we did it in school so i remember okay how yeah, like okay. who all know or remember what chiral centers are I know on a surface, uh, like in the sense that chiral is not completely symmetrical, while a chiral is like somewhat symmet. I think it's symmetrical. Yeah, that's all there is to it. That's what I'm asking. Just know what is chiral. It should it shouldn't be like oh I'm talking about chiral and you don't know what it is. You know what is chiral? Sanskriti Arnav Smera. What about you guys? I guess in that box. <laughs> I don't remember that much, but like I do remember something. What thing? What something like that's what I'm asking. Do you know what is chiral? Simple, like carbon ke char bonds hote hain na. So you just need to see what is attached on all four bonds of the carbon. So if all four of them are the same. अगर एक भी सिमेट्री निकला देन इट इज नॉट कायरल इट्स कॉल्ड ए कायरल बट इफ ऑल फोर ऑफ देम आर डिफरेंट देन दैट कार्बन इज कॉल्ड अ कायरल कार्बन यूजली रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय एन एस्पेक्ट ओवर इट दैट्स व्हाट कायरालिटी इज सो व्हाई इज कायरल कायरालिटी इंपॉर्टेंट इज दैट्स व्हाट फॉर्म्स द बेसिस फॉर ऑप्टिकल आइसोमेरिज्म तो whenever you have chiral carbons like agar charo sides different different hai like for example we have oh over here then hydrogen over here then aage ki taraf let's say ch3 and piche ki taraf let's say um cl so all four groups are different right so this ends up being a chiral carbon and this sort of carbon can um in very simple terms it can bend polarized light okay so usually it's always you know perceived to be bending either towards the left or towards the right देर इज नो सेट रूल की ओके अगर ऐसा है तो लेफ्ट होगा वैसा है तो राइट होगा दर इज नो सेट रूल लाइक दैट इट इज प्री रैंडम दिस यू कैन फाइंड आउट ओनली बाई एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन की वेदर इट्स गोइंग टू बेंड टू द लेफ्ट और बेंड टू द राइट एंड देन यू हैव द होल नेम इन कन्वेंशन ऑल्सो इफ इट इज बेंडिंग टूवर्ड्स द राइट आई थिंक इट्स कॉल्ड डी आइजोमर स्टैंडिंग फॉर डेक्सप्रो एंड इफ इट इज बेंडिंग टूवर्ड्स द लेफ्ट इट्स कॉल्ड दी एल आइजोमर स्टैंडिंग फॉर Levo, L A E V O, Levo rotation, Dextro rotation. Okay. Yes, right is Dextro and rotates to the left is Levo. But rotate is a better word to use. Rotate slight. Okay. So yeah, that's the basis for optical isomerism, and this occurs only when you have a completely asymmetrical carbon. You call it chiral carbon. Asymmetrical means all four of them are completely different groups. Okay. Now coming back to why is stereochemistry important uh, in our this thing? So 
let's take an example of an achiral carbon and apply it like make it go through sn2 mechanism so this is an achiral carbon yahan pe leaving group hai it's cl and could we go back to the uh, previous slide once yeah this is an example you can notice so chiral carbon rotates polarized light uh, if it rotates to the left it's called levo rotation represented by l small l and small d rotation to the left and this is rotation to the right so only chiral will show optical isomerism or yeah only chiral carbons can show optical isomerism a chiral will not show no but like what uh, what is optical isomerism the only the rotating polarized right so again so it's more of it can show see again it is related to the geometry of these four bonds and what species are present here right so whenever you have symmetry present in this thing the left side rotating and the right side rotating essentially they kind of cancel each other out that's why we say okay they don't rotate any polarized light but if all the molecules are only like aligned in a single way then you can see you know you put a beaker you pass polarized light through it you kind of can notice that rotation and then you can classify it okay this is levo rotation and this is dextro rotation and it is observed to have like it is observed exclusively only when you have asymmetrical carbons when all four of them are different polarized light means what polarized light is something that i need to do a little bit of research on uh it's i'll see if i can find a good resource and i'll pass it on to you guys is it like related to light or yeah it is related to light it's a property of light so when normal light when you make it pass through some special substances it's it is polarized yeah yeah so and, and i am pass it to nicol prism ha huh. yeah and uh, an application of polarized light like this particular property is used in your 3d glasses like 3d movies jab dekhne jaate ho so one side is red one side is blue right those glasses if you see differently colored so it has to do with polarization of light it kind of aligns it so it gives you that 3d effect It, this particular concept is not something i'm very familiar with polarization of light um so let me see if there's any resource i'll pass it on to you guys rotates polarized light means what so polarized light again it's called polarized light because um it has it it's got the property of polarization right so again molecule bond structure how the electrons are like how that molecule exists it kind of affects that light you know when when those light wavelengths hit it i know this is very very unsatisfactory let me see i'll do a little more research on this and i'll tell you guys about it what is polarization how it happens now okay but now version Hmm. Just one second. I'm copying it. Hmm. I'm. But to ask, um, what percentage of the chapter have we completed or covered? In terms of volume of the syllabus, this is not much, 
but this is a heavy concept uh, sn1 sn2 is the only part that takes maximum time the others are all like just normal reactions the way we've been doing reactions preparation ke sare reactions jaise kiye that's what it's like you won't go very deep into the mechanism and everything so this will take time and the rest of the reactions will maximum take one class that's it okay we started solutions in us so in our class okay solutions is that okay okay you guys started solid state mm -hmm. Which one will take more time, solid state or solutions? Solid state solutions, both of them are relatively small chapters. They're easy, at least compared to organic. Dono me, you have like a set amount of formulas, and you just have to apply the formulas. So both are a uh, numerical. Hit. Yeah. Solid states has a little bit more theory compared to numericals, but solutions is like pretty much seventy five percent of it is numericals. here now why is chirality and why is why are we discussing this right now why is it important for sn2 mechanism so let's take an example abhi we have this is my this is a reactant that i have taken let's say this is reacting with oh minus no oh minus is the nucleophile so this attacks it from the back and secondary carbon okay like as it, it it is undergoing sn2 mechanism let's say transition aayega and final product now what is the final product going to look like carbon will be here now this side chlorine has left so we won't have that anymore plus cl minus abhi न्यूक्लियोफाइल हैज अटैक फ्रॉम दिस साइड तो यहां पे ओ एच माइनस है ओ एच विल बी ओवर हियर दिस हाइड्रोजन इन्वर्जन इज टेकिंग प्लेस सो दिस विल बी ओवर हियर द ग्रीन कलर इथाइल ग्रुप इज ओवर हियर लाइक अवे फ्रॉम द स्क्रीन एंड टू वर्ड्स यू इज योर मिथाइल ग्रुप सी एच थ्री now if you compare this one and this one are they the same molecule like is the orientation or alignment same in both these cases no no like if i were to rotate this by 180 degrees so that this h and this h is on the same side and i get this oh on this side so even if i rewrite it so c is over here h ko maine is taraf laya so h is over here so what i basically aisa jo tha i'm just rotating it in this way so i brought oh over here so to take the place of cl oh is there laya h is over here then where would c2h5 go is it going to be away from the screen or is it going to come towards the screen a little of imagination is required here think about it 180 degree you like rotate it yes so c2h5 will be towards towards words ho gaya yeah so yahan pe jo away hai 
it has become two words over here. And the CH3 will go back. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it became ulta if I compare this one and this one. So that is why we say that SN2 mechanism has resulted in inversion. So ulta ho gaya matlab, suppose initially it was a dextro rotating, like it was rotating towards the light, uh, left, right side. Because ye iska structure ulta ho gaya, this has become levo rotating. So ye isomer ban gaya. Like I didn't get the same dextro rotatory compound again. Because of this inversion, it is rotating light in the opposite direction. Yeah. So not only the structure has rotated, but its optical properties also have become reverse. So that's one reason why uh, this is something that we care about. And this is like something that we need to note about this particular mechanism. How does this change anything about the reaction? Again, only the optical properties. Chemical properties, which reaction may like uh, effect nahi hua. It's the optical properties that has changed. This is like a characteristic of SN2, this thing. One of the things that we talk about when we talk about SN2 reactions. Okay. Um, in contrast, what happens in SN1, it's a completely different case. So that's like one point of difference between SN1 and SN2 mechanisms. So when you're answering questions, like this is a hint, um, you may be mentioned, it may be mentioned in the question key, uh, a reactant A, when, when it undergoes nucleophilic substitution resulted in inversion of the molecule. Then you need to keep in mind ki achha to fir SN2 mechanism se hua. So based on that, it will give you a clue ki a primary hai ya secondary hai ya tertiary, like all of that. Okay, so this is a characteristic that you need to know about SN2 mechanism. Okay, it results in this. This why have you written, what have you written below C2H1? This one, this is levo rotation. Yeah. But oh, right okay. now we haven't passed up light through it. So but like only when it, uh, like shifts light anti-clockwise is it called labio rota rotatory right yeah so but it's like a like this is an example i've given like what does it oh, okay okay like suppose this is dextro then the compound becomes, yeah yeah okay. yeah suppose we took levo in the first yeah. place it becomes dextro that way yeah i don't understand like what no like because of this inversion in the structure Uska optical properties be badal gaya. So if this happened to be dextro rotating compound, that has become a levo rotating compound. Huh? Yunki invert ho gaya na? Geometry invert ho gaya. So the direction in but which it rotates. Is because we inverted, right? No, no, so it's a characteristic of the compound. Oh, so like every compound is either dextro or uh Haan, agar chiral hai, either it is dextro or levo and that dextro levo it will show when the light is passed yes. through yeah yeah okay so this is like one thing about uh sn2 mechanism now let's look at what kind of substrates will undergo sn2 mechanism what type of haloalkanes now looking at the mechanism you guys remember this mechanism, right? Have you noted it down? Now, let's say I have a methyl. I have a primary. And I have a um, secondary carbon. And I have a tertiary uh, halide compound. So out of this, so methyl versus primary versus secondary versus tertiary, in which case do you think will SN1 happen very easily? 
Mithail. Okay. I want answers from all of you. Okay. Uh, Sia is saying Mithail. And what will happen? Yeah, Adit, what were you asking? Could you repeat the question? Yeah, out of these four, methyl primary, secondary, tertiary, in which case is SN1, SN2 going to be going to happen most easily? Okay, Sia and Arya both said methyl. Sanskriti, Kaveri, Adit, Arnav, Smera. Mithail. Smera, Mithail. Kaveri, Mithail. Okay. Adit, Arnav, Sanskriti, you three? Probably the first one, the Mithail direction. Mithail, okay. Arnav also said Mithail, okay. Smera and Sanskrit, we just waiting for you guys. Yeah, my said Mithal. All oh, right, sorry. Uh, Sanskriti, what do you say? Sanskriti, in case you're speaking, I, you have been muted. No, I'm sending the answer, but I think it's not going to you. Okay. Abhi bata do na. Your mic is on. Um, I think it will be the first one. Which one? I'm the first one. Mithail. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Nice. All of you gave the exact correct answer. Mithail is maximum. Um, Mithail is most uh, like most reactive for SN2 mechanism. What is the reason for that? Hindus, not the methyl groups. Yeah. So, methyl may CH3 and all hydrogens here. So, agar back door say if this needs to attack, there is lots of space for the nucleophile to come and, you know, form a bond and make its place over there. Compare that to tertiary, here are bulky groups. Hai. So, if you have to insert another nucleophile here, it's going to, it's very crowded over here. So methyl group is going to be the most reactive, followed by primary, followed by secondary, followed by tertiary. So tertiary is least reactive towards SN2 mechanism. So that is why tertiary prefers a different way to undergo the substitute rea substitution reaction, which is SN1 mechanism. Yeah. So SN1, now that you have an idea of SN2, what do you think? Uh, man, go to the previous page one. Yeah. yeah. I said, instead of the methyl groups, uh, if there is hydrogen, then then. So then, it secondary, If there is one hydrogen, then it will secondary. If there are two hydrogens, hai, then that's a primary carbon. So what if all three are hydrogen? Will it still be ster have steric ions? Then that's a methyl group. From the hydrogen. Yeah, but like, is there steric hindrance from hydrogen as well? No. Oh, no. Steric hindrance is, think of it as hindrance due to crowd, hindrance due to the geometry of the molecule. So, if there are molecules, hai, there's lots of spaces. Mm -hmm. It's not very crowded. So, no steric hindrance there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, the more the branching, the more the steric hindrance? Basically, just look at how much crowd there is around the carbon. Like, is it related to the number of methyl groups or the amount of branching? Both in a way. Like if I have tertiary, uh, let's extend it. Suppose I've got like CH3 and then here is C2H5 hai, and then CH3. Hai. This is even more crowded, right? Because it has CH2 also and there's another CH3 also over here. So it, it's basically the number of atoms that's surrounding the carbon atom. How much of a crowd the is degree of the carbon atom? Yeah. Yeah, that's so more number of atoms means more steric hindrance. Yeah. So so tertiary usually like whenever 
SN2 is not possible or if that's like really difficult to undergo that, uh, that mechanism, those carbon atoms prefer SN1 mechanism. SN1, again, same funda as SN2, this is also substitution. We keep talking about substitution reactions only. It's happening due to a nucleophile, same thing. But in this case, instead of two species affecting the rate, you have to only one species, uh, one molecule decides the rate of the reaction. So unimolecular. So basically exact same as SN2. So this is substitution reaction by nucleophile, like kya substitute kar rahe, nucleophile substitute kar rahe, such a way that only one species decides the rate of the reaction. Only one species is present in the rate determining step. Now that rate determining step gets more important in this case because SN1 happens in multiple steps. Okay, so the main reason for SN1 is whenever you have bulky uh, alkyl groups, they do not allow SN2 mechanism. Why steric hindrance? So in that case, they go for SN1. What happens? Step one, Pele step may uh, fission of the CX bond. Okay, so fission matlab breaking. So the carbon halogen bond breaks to form a carbocation. So again, SN1 tertiary prefers, right? Opposite of SN2 here. So when we have C, Br, CH3, 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 attacked by OH minus, PHA say attack nahi kar sakta hai. So what this, what this does is, the first step, this bond breaks to form a carbocation. CH3, CH3, CH3 plus Br minus. So immediately you can find why tertiary carbons prefer to undergo SN1 mechanism. Can anyone figure out why? Tertiary carbocations are more stable. Absolutely. So primary, secondary, methyl say subse zyada stable is tertiary. So it works out both ways. It's a win-win situation. Unko, unke liye SN2 mechanism hai, without any steric hindrance. This carbocation is stable, so this will prefer SN1 mechanism. Number two, why does the bond just break the CX bond? This again, like this is stable enough, right? So it's okay for this to um, when the reaction happens, like if you want a reaction to happen, normally. When you have only the compound present, it's it doesn't exist in the form of ions. But when you add a nucleophile like OH minus or something, there is some amount of polarity that is created, right? So that's a very good question. That's another factor of difference between SN1 and SN2. And when you have something like a secondary, uh, like, yeah, secondary halide or something, if you want it to force it to go in a certain way, you can make the medium either polar or non-polar. So when the medium becomes polar, either due to the presence of OH minus or whatever solvent that you take while doing the reaction, that polarity again will cause this like, like dissolves like, like if something is polar, it water is polar, it makes salts dissociate into ions. Similar factors, the polarity basically, uh, what do you say? It contributes towards breaking of this bond and you end up having ionic, like this forms a carbocation and an anion. Ma'am, but in that case, then why don't we write plus OH minus? 
because it only one this that's like the medium plays a role but it's not an active role like fission of cx bond matlab it happens only between both of these at this point of time the oh minus does not interact with this beyond like okay generally polar hai so that polarity makes this particular bromine to you know get that electrons negative ion stabilized by the medium by water molecules whatever you might have taken okay yeah now step 2 so again speciality okay now this is the most important step you can see that i've put a reversible sign here cuz one this is a out of all the steps this is the slowest step and because it is the slowest step this is the rate determining step rate determining matlab this basically decides the rate of the reaction overall substitution ka and you can see that in this step rate determining step mein it depends on just this molecule slowly solely on this molecule only one species which is why this is classified under sn1 unimolecular i'll finish up the mechanism of sn1 sn2 so then once like you can study it as a comparison between both that way it will be better uh, both you really can contrast both of them both are opposite to each other so it will be simpler and this is the last class this week guys maybe this weekend we might have an offline session we we'll see We have a physics offline this Saturday. Mm. So step two. So once the ions are formed, the nucleophile. Now the OH minus is going to step in. Here, the positive charge create was. So negative is attracted to positive. So attack of nucleophile. on the carbocation we have the carbocation then nucleophile attacks so negative charge attacks positive charge gives your final product this is a faster step so this literally does not really uh, decide the rate so you reading it in the context of halo alkanes because halo alkanes ka the main characteristic apart from elimination is they undergo substitution reaction cuz iodide and bromides are very good leaving groups but the mechanism is true of any substitution reaction that's why it's it's a very generic name nucleophilic substitution unimolecular or bimolecular so as a general rule koi bhi substitution nucleophilic substitution reaction hoga agar methyl ya primary hai to it will take sn2 agar tertiary hai bulky group se idhar or anything that is that has a stable carbocation that will undergo sn1 now considering carbocation hai इसका हाइब्रिडाइजेशन क्या है sp2 और sp2 का ज्योमेट्री क्या होगा व्हाट इज द शेप प्लेनर प्लेनर आई थिंक ट्रिगोनल प्लेनर मतलब द होल मॉलिक्यूल इन अ सिंगल प्लेन इमेजिन माय मॉलिक्यूल इज ओवर हियर ऑन अ फ्लैट सरफेस व्हिच इज माय हैंड व्हेन oh- अटैक्स इट 
इट कैन अटैक आइदर फ्रॉम टॉप और फ्रॉम द बॉटम क्योंकि काफी स्पेस है ऑन बोथ साइड ऑफ द मोलिक्यूल या नो लाइक इमेजिन दे जस्ट लाइक एटम्स मोलिक्यूल इन द बीकर ओ एच माइनस आया इधर से तो अटैक नहीं कर सकता है बिकॉज यू हैव द थ्री सी एच थ्री ग्रुप ऑन दिस प्लेन सो अगर ओ एच माइनस बॉन्ड फॉर्म करना है तो या तो ऊपर से आ सकता है या फिर नीचे से आ सकता है राइट सो कंसिडरिंग दैट डू यू थिंक देर विल बी इन्वर्जन इन दिस मैकेनिज्म जैसे एस एन टू में था नो इन्वर्जन सो यहां पे यू गेट लाइक वॉट एवर रियक्ट एंड यू टेक इट डज नॉट मैटर यू गेट फिफ्टी परसेंट मिक्सचर ऑफ बोथ फिफ्टी फिफ्टी होगा क्योंकि ऊपर से भी हो सकता है नीचे से भी हो सकता है बोथ पॉसिबिलिटीज आर ट्रू सो नथिंग इज गोइंग टू डोमिनेट सो दैट फिफ्टी परसेंट बट फॉर दैट हाँ बट फॉर दैट यू नीड मोर सब्सट्रेट्स एंड मोर न्यूक्लियो फाइल्स राइट नॉट जस्ट वन इन वन यू कैन have chance of both you can't have both right i mean think about it practically are you capable of doing reactions with single single molecule no so no, you're going to take like a whole test tube full beaker full that's still going to have like like one mole is 6.6 into 10 power 23 of those molecules right so practically speaking you will end up having 50 50% mixture of both So fifty percent dextro plus fifty percent levo. That sort of a mixture is called a racemic mixture or racemic mixture, however you want to pronounce. So fifty percent, fifty like let me write it properly. So fifty percent dextro plus fifty percent levo. is called a racemic mixture so that's another defining characteristic ki sn2 mein complete inversion ho raha hai sn1 mein you getting half of d half of l so that's not going to rotate any light because whatever dextro is rotating levo is going to cancel it out so net result is no rotation of light Based on levo dextro, can there be any questions asked? Because you just said like the light thing is we're not looking no, at it now. No, no. These again, these are characteristic of S N one S N two reactions, right? So you may be given that okay, so and so compound follows substitution reaction ends up with a racemic mixture. Then you need to understand that okay, racemic mixture मतलब S N one mechanism हुआ मतलब उसमें tertiary carbon हो सकता है because it is preferred by tertiary halides so that way you use these facts in questions but you you won't be as like primary questions on uh, optical isomerism you won't get okay. and another fun fact because इस मैकेनिज्म में कार्बोकैटियन फॉर्म हो रहा है ना सो अपार्ट फ्रॉम टर्शियरी विच एवर स्पीशीज इज केपेबल ऑफ फॉर्मिंग स्टेबल कार्बोकैटियन विल अंडर गो एस एन वन सो बल्कि एल्काइल ग्रुप डोंट अलाउ फॉर इट ऑल्सो अलाइलिक एंड बेन्साइलिक हेलाइट विल अंडर गो एस एन वन मैकेनिज्म Do repeat this point. So, like, see, this particular mechanism follows like first step here formation of carbocation, right? So, whichever molecule is capable of forming a stable carbocation, that will prefer S N one mechanism. So, one of that is tertiary carbocations, like tertiary halides. So, tertiary will prefer S N one mechanism. Apart from that, allylic and benzylic also prefer S N one mechanism. So allylic primary Why? हो सकता है, हाँ? Why? Because formation of carbocation, right? Rather than 
undergo like this sort of an attack if forming a carbocation is taking less energy because greater stability matlab less energy might as well spend lesser energy to get the reaction done always 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 mechanisms final products whatever process is taking place it is driven by stability like zyada stability chahiye so whichever route will have more stability less difficulties like less obstacles like that is the route that it's going to follow so allylic benzylic prefer sn1 एंड यहाँ पे जो ऑर्डर लिखा है उसका एग्जैक्ट ऑपोजिट सो टर्शरी इज मोस्ट रिएक्टिव फॉलोड बाय सेकेंडरी फॉलोड बाय प्राइमरी फॉलोड बाय मिथाइल Okay, yeah. so go through it, and uh, we'll stop here. Uh, next class, me, I'll basically summarize the differences, just like digest it a little bit, revise it. The next class, me, we'll just have a quick summary, and then we'll go on to the next. Yeah. Okay.